In this project, I'm using Kobo yarn and this is DK weight. I double strands to create this chart. You will find all the material used in this project in the description box below, including the guest watch. And now is the time for the yarn giveaway. <laughs> for those who locate in the US and Canada, Land Brand Yarn want to give one winner of this giveaway six skeins of this Kobo yarn. To participate to the giveaway, just go ahead, comment below. What is your favorite color of this Kobo yarn? You need to follow us on Instagram and share this video on your Instagram story. That's it, and I'm going to pick the winner in the upcoming video. To create the band, you first need to measure around your belly button and take that number, subtract with one inch. For me, I have 32 inches, subtract with one inch, I have 31. And for me, 31 inches equal 87 chain. Row one, chain one. Now, you're going to single crochet in second chain from hook. But this time when you do single crochet, you must make sure that you go into both loops. In this case, we have four loops because we double strands. And you need to have like that on your hook when you do single crochet because this way it's easier to do West Coast stitch on the second row. So look at this one. Sometimes when I do single crochet, I just go like that. You see two loops because I double strands, but um, usually you see just one loop. That is not good. So you have to go in the middle to have that both loops or four loops on the hook like that. If you double strands, you need to have four loops. If you just use one strand, you need to have two loops and to make single crochet like that. It's going to make it easier when you do West Coast stitch in row two. So make sure that every time you add single crochet, you have that, like you make it that way. So again, if you double strands, you're going to have four loops on your hook at the back when you poke the hook in. So you just poke into the middle and that you're going to see what I mean. Just keep doing that until the end of the chain, like the, the long chain that you made. For me, I'm going to end this row one with 87 single crochet. Now I want to show you how it looks at the back when you do what I just show you. You should have something like that at the back of your row if you poke the hook the way I show you. So check your work and see if you have something like that. If not, maybe you do something wrong. But it's very easy, just keep poke the hook into the middle and then you have that in the back of your hook. So yeah, i see you at the end of the row. And when you're done with your row one, just make sure you got the right measurement. I still have 31 inches. So now row two, chain one. And when you turn your work, you see that usually when you do single crochet, you would go into that stitch, right? The first stitch. And that is a normal single crochet. But we are doing West Coast stitch. What we do instead is that we're going to poke the hook into the V shape, like upside down V shape, <laughs> you see, in there. So you just forget about the first single crochet there, we're gonna make it up at the end of the row and it's going to turn out great. Just pay attention into upside down V shape and poke the hook there and make single crochet there. And this way, your stitch will look like a knit stitch. And sometimes it's not easy, but it's durable. So I am experiencing okay journey at this moment. <laughs> it's not that uh, difficult because I think the first row that I show you to do that way is help. 
this row not to be too difficult. So yeah, go ahead, poke the hook into every V shape, the upside down V shape, and continue that until the end. You need to count the stitch as well because if you don't count the stitch, it's often to miss one stitch because we didn't do the first single crochet into that stitch like a regular single crochet. But I will show you at the at the end how you can make it back to the same stitch count. So let's have a look at this West Coast stitch together. I really love how it looks and I hope you do too. And yeah, just sometimes it's hard to poke the hook in but really worth it to try. <laughs> so when you get into the end of the row, you will see that you have your last one to poke the hook in in the upside down V shape and then there's no more upside down V shape but we still have kind of like you know the space there there you have to put your last single crochet and you can just poke the hook in wherever possible this way you will have the same stitch count so for me in row two I still have 87 stitches or 87 this you know west coast stitch um yeah look at the beginning it's also straight and also at the end now for row three to row nine you're just going to repeat row two so go ahead repeat row two until you get into row nine and if you feel like you want to continue more you can do more but we're going to change the hook later on so maybe just watch the video a little bit more to see the measurement before you continue more rows or make different decisions So here I have made a total of 9 rows and it measures 31 inches length with 1.5 inches width. And now I am changing the hook to 8mm hook because I need some more length on the side like you know, you will see. So in order to make this stitch with 8mm hook, you still need to use the 6mm hook to poke um, you know that upside down we stitch because it's gonna be too tight to use 8 millimeter hook and this is what I'm doing <laughs> and you might have to do the same so for this row 10 to row 14 you're going to repeat row 2 everything the same just change the hook although it might get a bit difficult because the hook is bigger than the stitch so this is what I do I just use the six millimeter hook to poke and make the way through before I use eight millimeter hook and yeah if this happened to you you can use the same method that I'm doing here and that will work and after you do this row 10 row 11 will get better because like you already work with the bigger hook so it will be easier to poke the hook through so here I have made 14 rows and it's now measured 32 inches length and approximately 3 inches width if you want your um, band to get wider like the width bigger than this now this one you can just continue more rows 
but for me I like the look this way three inches is perfect and this is the measurement you know before we change the hook is 31 inches and after we change the hook the last row measure 32 inches and I'm very happy with that if you want more length just go on and uh, increase by add two stitches in one stitch this way you will gain more uh, length if not just continue with the body part so the, the body part I call it round 15 because we're gonna close the, the row to make it round after you chain one then you turn your work and now you are going to half double crochet slip stitch back loop only and this is how you do it's like back loop and now you just slip stitch that way okay let's do it again yarn over pull through back loops we have two loops because two double strand now we have three loops and then slip stitch to all two loops or four loops in this case and that is how we do half double crochet slip stitch back loop only so just go ahead do that until the end of the row and i will show you how we turn this row into round Here we are at the last stitch there you're going to do your half double crochet slip stitch back loop only over there as well sorry i am off the camera sometimes i just forget to check the camera so it's the same thing that you do all the whole row and yeah you should have your work at the back side looks so pretty like a bread no i really love it and i will definitely use this stitch for more of my design now we're going to close the row or connect to make this row into round what we're going to do is that we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of this round and yeah that is how we make the row into round now <laughs> and this round 15 we will have a total of uh, 87 stitches and now round 16 chain one and now you're going to add half double crochet slip stitch back loop only into the same stitch where you have slip stitch so this way you don't lose any stitch count and yeah now just continue with half double crochet slip stitch back loop only along and across until the end of the round and you also should have this round at um, 87 stitches make sure to add the stitch marker because you know maybe you don't see the stitch coming so yeah every time you begin the round from now on there will be no beginning change after this one that is very important to add the stitch marker so you don't get lost now we come to the end of the round i <laughs> didn't add a stitch marker but you should <laughs> um yeah this is the last stitch and i'm going to change the color and i'm changing the color from now on in every two rounds so yeah you can do the same if you plan to have your shorts look like my one and if you get a rhythm pattern our info will be in the rhythm pattern as well so in round 16 we have a total of 87 stitches round 17 we start right away at the first stitch of previous round 
So like the next stage or first stage of previous round, whatever you will call, like I said, there's no beginning chain and no slip stitch uh, anymore from here, from the end of round 16. So what you do, you're just going to add half double crochet, slip stitch, back loop only, along and across again. So actually around 17, round 18, and round 19, it just to repeat round 16. And you have every round a total of 87 stitches. And like I, you see in the screen, keep trying every round to see the fit you may want to increase, but I'm going to increase my work in round 19. And how to increase? You're going to adding two stitches in one stitch, make sure to spreading them out evenly. You should stop when you reach to the pubic bone area and your last round should have an even number. On the screen is my number count or stitch count of each round. My work now measure 34 inches and I tried on and I really love the fit. And yeah, we are now ready to do the crush area. So now let's look at our work you see that in the beginning of each round is kind of like the line that show there. Now we're gonna move that part, the opening part, to the side of the body. So just do that. I want my opening part to be on my right side. So now the front side is facing me. <laughs> and now we're going to do uh, separating the legs. So we're going to do the right leg and the left leg. For me, I have 112 stitches, so my right is 56 stitches and my left is 56 stitches. So go ahead, add the stitch markers and come back to finish this round. Here, I'm going to add my last stitch of half double crochet, slip stitch, back loop only into this round and chain one. I'm going to cut the yarn here and it's okay to have the stitch uneven because we're going to um, crochet over that part. I will show you when we get there. Just now <laughs> finish the round, chain one, cut the yarn. And if you have something like this, don't you worry, we'll fix that. Here I have my work facing me and I'm going to work on the uh, left leg, like on this way round to the back. However, I would suggest you to start your slip knot on the back side to prevent the hole. But in this video, I already started the front, so I will explain the way the video is showing you to prevent the confusion. But the principle is still the same. When you start at the back, you will also work on the back like that in that round, but you're going to work on your right leg first instead of your left leg. Since I start in the front, so my round one begin on the left leg. So poke the hook to the stitch that you separate and slip knot there. Chain two, ah, okay, I just chain one here. I just wanna show you the hole that I'm talking about. You see, when you slip knot under there is a little hole there. All right, now I chain another one, so complete with chain two, okay, when you start. And this chain two just to build up the yarn. We're not counting as a stitch yet. And we're going to add two half double crochet slip stitch back loop only into the same stitch. And from now on, you're going to add half double crochet, slip stitch, back loop only into each stitch across until you arrive at the back where you have your stitch marker.
So here you're going to add two stitches in that one stitch, which is the last stitch of your uh, round one of the left leg. Every round of the left leg, you're going to add two stitches more in the beginning and at the end. See the front of the left leg have two stitches at the beginning and the back the last stitch has two stitches at the end and now we're going to continue the right leg from the back toward the front we're going to do the same starting with two stitches two half double crochet slip stitch back loop only So let's have a look at our work. You see two stitches on the last stitch of the left leg and two stitches in the beginning of the right leg from the back. So now you're just going to continue one stitch in each uh, stitch, like one half double crochet, slip stitch back loop only in each stitch across until you arrive at the front. However, you need to add the stitch marker on your last stitch of your left leg. So here I go back to add the stitch marker into the last stitch of my left leg. This way I will know where to stop and where to start the right leg. You see that is the last stitch of my left leg. All right, so now you're good and just continue with half double crochet slip stitch back loop only across until you arrive to the front and I meet you there. Now let's add two stitches into that last stitch. So for me, in my round one, the complete of the round one, I will have a total of 116 stitches because the left leg I have made 58 stitches and the right leg is another 58 stitches. I'm ending the round using another hook, smaller hook to slip stitch into the beginning chain because the beginning chain is too small to poke the 8mm hook. And yeah, start round two of the left leg with chain two to build up the yarn. And now it's just completely the same again. You're going to start with two half double crochet slip stitch back loop only into the first stitch of this round two. And then you're going to add one stitch, one half double crochet slip stitch back loop only in each stitch across until you arrive to where you have your stitch marker. And that stitch you're going to add two half double crochet slip stitch back loop only at the back there.
it's better to remove the stitch marker before you add your last two half double crochet slip stitch back loop only into that last stitch of your left leg of round two and you are at the back side right now now we begin our round two of the right leg with two half double crochet slip stitch back loop only in that first stitch of your round two of the right leg and yeah you already see it just repeating the same step after you add that two stitch and this is what you have again two stitch in the last um, stitch from the left leg and two stitch in the first stitch of the right leg now you need to add back the stitch marker so you know where to stop and from here you're going to just repeat by adding half double crochet slip stitch back loop only along and across until you arrive to the front side again to complete your right leg of round two So here is the last stitch of your round two right leg let's add two half double crochet slip stitch back loop only into that stitch and this round two of the complete round you will have a total of 120 stitches because the left leg you have made 60 stitches and the right leg you just made another 60 stitches and now we're going to slip stitch into the beginning chain the same way use the small hook to slip stitch this way is easier so at this point just try it on and see the fit and see if you need more increasing already i am going to increase more than just the beginning and at the end in my round three and round four and to increase the extra increasing i'm just gonna add two stitches in one stitch throughout the round by spreading them out nicely make sure that you add increased stitches evenly both legs so if you add four stitches on the right you should add four stitches on the left as well so for example in my round three and round four i add four stitches extra on both legs and you can see that the stitch count that i have here on the screen you can stop right now and have a look again slowly <laughs> and your stitch count will be different depending on your own measurement so now let's check my uh, crotch area I actually stop here. I'm going to do the bridge after this, but let's measure this together. So for me, the crush area that fit me is approximately four inches. The best way to find out if it's going to fit you is to stop and make the bridge already and just try it on. And if it's too tight, you might need more rounds. And if it's too loose, then you need less rounds okay and for me it's just great now i'm going to show you how to do the bridge i start my bridge with chain five again you might need more chain but should not be less than five and this five chain measures approximately two inches and you will know when you try <laughs> so let's try five chain first and see if it fit you now let's have a look at this part the back side of your work you see the left leg the first and the second stitch and the right leg the first and the second stitch we are going to connect our bridge with the first stitch of the left leg because we're going to do the left leg first and we're going to slip stitch like that and that moment when we slip stitch we have already created one more stitch so now we have six stitch in total chain two to build up the yarn and this is how we start our left leg round one we're going to add half double crochet in each stitch across start from 
um, the slip stitch you're going to have in total of six half double crochet on the bridge part why I do half double crochet instead of half double crochet slip stitch the reason is because I want it to be strong and don't have a hole and yeah just do that now I already have one two three four five one more and you already know the first one is come from the slip stitch when you get into the end of your bridge you should have six of half double crochet All right, now you are back to the front side of your left leg again. Okay, and now you're going to add half double crochet slip stitch back loop only like you always do on the whole part of this body part of the shorts. You're going to do that here now in each stitch across until you arrive at the back side again. Here we are at the back side of our round one of the left leg and I have one more stitch to go here. So to finish off the round, I have 88 stitches right now. You see on the screen how come I have 88 stitches and now we're going to start round two right away on the bridge. If you have a big hole when you start your first stitch on the bridge, you can slip stitch first. But I'm not slip stitch at this point. I'm going to start with half double crochet. And you can see me, I did it wrong this stitch. I instead make half double crochet slip stitch. You don't do that. You do half double crochet, okay? <laughs> I just cannot go back to fix that anymore. So like always on the bridge, always going to be half double crochet and on the leg part going to be half double crochet slip stitch back loop only. So this is just going to be the repeating now after you make the bridge of uh, six half double crochet you're going to do the same thing again. Make sure to add the stitch marker right now because this round you have no beginning chain, no slip stitch, nothing. So the round going to blend in with the leg part and you might not see. I always do that to add a stitch marker if I can't see the stitch to make sure that I don't um, do it wrong <laughs> and yeah now just do half double crochet slip stitch back loop only around across until you arrive again to the beginning of that uh, round you see in my round two I also have 88 stitches and from now you're just going to repeat round two for as many rounds as you want for me I'm going to make a total of nine rounds because that is the length I want my shorts to be and I will show you how to finish off with the edge. And here I have made a total of nine rounds and let's have a look our bridge. You see that the bridge will have something like this. I really love the stitch though, even though they look different, but still look pretty nice. So yeah, now I'm going to do round 10, which is the edge as well. And I changed the color to this tan or this beige color and I just going to do slip stitch across and when I do slip stitch I poke the hook into all loops 
if you just use one strand you will just poke the hook into two loops but I have two strands so I poke the hook into four loops to do the slip stitch across this round and simple is that I don't want anything fancy I just want it to look nice in this way if you want to do the edge different with any other stitch go ahead have fun with it but for me slip stitch work well After I make the last stitch, I chain the hook and what I did to finish off is that I poke the hook into the first slip stitch and pull through the yarn slip stitch again and pull through. This way I found it look neater but if you want just to finish with chain one cut yarn it's also work. It really depends on you. So now I'm just gonna pull back the yarn and I will weave in the yarn at the end of the project. So one leg done and now we're going to continue on the other side which is on the right leg. I like to start my project always on the corner of the work and in this case we're going to start on the bridge part and you need to make sure that you have the space to add six half double crochet. So what I do, I just poke the hook into that corner. I do it at the back and you will slip knot there where you can poke the hook around the bridge and you're going to chain two and this chain two just to build up the yarn. Now you're going to add your first half double crochet into the same stitch where you just slip knot. And from now I'm going to add the half double crochet in the between stitch there because it's more secure this way. You see that you see the space in between stitches. You're just going to add the half double crochet there. And I already count I have the space enough for a total of six of half double crochet. So make sure you got the space. I'm sure you got the space because you do the same thing as I do. And yeah, go ahead add a total of six of half double crochet stitch on the bridge area. Okay, now that you got your six of half double crochet done, you now going to repeat everything the same like the other leg, like the first leg. I'm not going to show you anymore in this video because it's the same thing. And if you forget, just go back to watch how you did your first leg, your left leg. I did my left leg. So just go ahead to watch again, rewatch again. Everything going to be the same. I meet you when you have met both legs and we're going to do the crochet together.
After you finish both legs, you should have something like this by now. And we are going to do the closure. I added three buttons and the size of the button you can find in the description box below. I add the buttons on one end and the other side I just add some stitches to be the opening and the closing of the short. After you're done with the buttons, now time to finish the other end. So take the hook, 6mm hook and slip knot into the last round of the band. Chain 2 to build up the yarn. And now you're going to add half double crochet across. I am adding just 12 half double crochet because that's what I need for make the shell stitch later on the second round. So if you have the same band like I do and you add three uh, buttons you can just follow me exactly the same way so I also use the tan color of yarn now because I just like the contrast I mean not really much of the contrast because the color quite um, like how to say it, really natural tone so yeah go ahead adding the half double crochet um, you know evenly I find 12 half double crochet is just perfect for the width of the band. Row 2, chain 1 to your work and you're going to do a straight edge stitch which is one single crochet into the first stitch and add another single crochet only into the left loops, the loop on the left. If you use just one strand, just one loop, but I have two loops. <laughs> so that is how you do straight edge stitch. If it's too far, just go back and rewatch again. And now you add another half double crochet into the same stitch. The first stitch we count as one half double crochet. Chain two, add another two half double crochet into the same stitch. And this I'm going to use, you know, the space of chain two just to use um, to close with the button so just try and see if it will fit with your button like I said if you use the same size with the button that I use it will fit for sure so when you know that it fits now time to continue now you're going to add one single crochet in each of the next three stitches or in each of the next three half double crochet from previous row And the next one you're going to do the same, two half double crochet, chain two, two half double crochet into the next stitch. And again, now you're going to repeat by adding single crochet in each of the next three half double crochet from previous row. And now again, two half double crochet, chain two, two half double crochet into the next stitch. And last time, you're going to add one single crochet in each of the next three half double crochet from previous row. And now just slip stitch into the next available stitch just right there wherever you can find. Chain one and cut the yarn. <laughs> 